Hey, this is just an updated video of my workflow for 2025. Um, it mainly consists out of Dollars Mono and Cascadeur. Uh, so in this video, I'm just going to show you how I use it, um, provide you with some tips and just explain some features that uh, you might like. First, I want to get a video reference that I can use uh, for this animation or to, to demonstrate my workflow. So I stumbled on this video from Chris Sanders, just talking about quick magic, because quick magic is all the rage right now, and exactly how um, this lady's uh, performances translate into uh, quick magic. So I did watch some of the stuff, her uh, name is Sophia Stunts. She does very good stunt work, and with any video mocap, it's important for your camera to be as stable as possible, as still as possible. And she actually does a nice setup there. Um, so he demonstrates just what quick magic little animation looks like. So he wanted to use that animation, nice and simple. Great, and let's actually see the result. So not perfect, but not bad. I went into uh, Sophia's videos and I actually found one myself that I like to use, which was this one. And I imported that uh, into Dollars Mono, which I will show you now. So the first thing I do is I cut up the video in exactly what I need, so which I've done here. Um, so I make two versions, 160 frames, 130 frames, and then I'll explain it later why I do that. Then I open Dollars Mono. This is my settings for Dollars Mono. So while I'm here, I just want to quickly show you my settings and what I prefer. So if you're using specifically Dollars Mono um, with Cascader, you need to activate the setting. So you go Settings, um, Stream Export, and you tick this, BVH for Cascader. Uh, it's just so that the retargeting is uh, much easier. And then here's my capture mode. So Dollars Mono also has facial capture. Well, I'm not going to use this for, for, for this uh, example. And then I've got my sens sensitivity as high, my tolerance high, and also enhanced mode. What I do like is uh, this camera mode, this uh, yeah, video options. I use background mast. So let me show you, go back over here. You open a 60 frame per second video. And yeah, I'm just checking to see how exactly this uh, transfers through. Um, this is obviously all uh, raw capture. And yeah, I'm pretty happy. So the next thing we have to do is we need to record it. What I then I do is I press record and then I press play and I play out the animation uh, up until the end and stop the animation. Just press stop. You'll see me already hovering around there uh, to stop it. And then when the animation is stopped, it's ready to be converted. So I rarely use Blender, um, but I use it to convert BVH to FBX, but I'll show you here. These are also the steps to follow doing it. So here I open Blender, I usually delete this, I go File, Import, BVH, look for where my file is saved, um, so it's under the dollars mono, and then I need to make sure that that is selected, update scene frames per second, so to capture the 60 frames per second, or to bring it imported to 60 frames per second. I just check does it work, it works, I'm happy, so now it's time to export it. So I do find, find exporting it uh, to Cascader makes the model very, very big. So this is also just another thing you need to select. So you go to your download file or you go to your save file, make it whatever you want. I usually just make it raw. So I know I started there. And then we need to make sure that um, the scale is 0 0.01. And then here, I'm just going to double check to see if it was 60 frames per second that was imported. And then maybe somebody can help me out here. So the frame rate is 60 frames per second. That's perfect. But as soon as I export from Blender to FBX, it locks at 30 frames per second. I'm not sure if it's a Blender thing or what it is. But please, if you do know, please let, please let us know in the comments. I have been struggling with it. I can't figure it out. But that brings me to my other part, why I have a second video, 30 frames per second, that is to import into Cascader, so that my reference uh, is all in sync. When importing to Cascader, you need to create three scenes. One scene is going to be the model you want to use. The other scene is going to be the retargeting pro project that I did make available, um, and I'll put it down in the description uh, below. This is to make your retargeting much simpler. 
and in three I've got then my imported raw uh, animation so then there's my model there's my retargeting rig and then here I'm importing importing the FBX just a drag and drop is, is uh, will do as well so I drop in my um, animation and then I'm gonna check here to see if it imported correctly we're going to joint mode and there's the animation so again when beginning the uh, recording so I record and then I press play so there's a little bit of a delay there so that's me taking out the delay and then I usually just like to move the whole animation up just so that it's more in sync or just that it, it, so that it is in sync with my video reference and now I'm happy with my timeline you select all the joints the whole uh, scene or timeline uh, you go edit um, then edit copy interval then we go on my retargeting skeleton highlight highlight your whole um, interval or all the frames you need so for example mine was just over 900 frames make sure your selection is above 900 frames and then you highlight all the joints select your interval uh, edit and then paste interval and this is now on to my uh, retargeting uh, skeleton uh, and then from here, uh, we can take it on and uh, copy and paste that onto my actual model I want to use. So you, what I usually like to do is I like to put it in uh, the box controller mode. Um, I'm not sure if it really makes a difference, but I feel it just the quality that's being copied over is a little bit better. So I make sure my interval is big enough. So just uh, almost a thousand there. And then I retarget the, uh, the animation. So to do that is we go to we go to the targeting copy and then we highlight all the joints or the box controller whatever you would like to use make sure the whole section there is selected almost a th uh, over 900 and edit retarget paste and here it is this is raw um, mono animation so not worked at it at all I like to import it into Cascada because that's where I can make the changes uh, I want to make. So now here I import my video reference and then this is where you notice I use the 30 frames per second one. So we're going to wait for that to import. I usually make it a little bit bigger just so I can see the, the reference a bit better. And then I, from here I'll usually play around with the animation to make sure it's all nice and um, in sync. So now I'm happy with my, my raw animation. Uh, what I used to do was I used to unbake it. So all that blue, that whole blue line at the bottom, that's all the keyframes together. It's just much easier to edit it if it's less keyframes. Animation like this is gonna take a while to unbake. Um, I'm not always happy with the results, um, but I found a way to work around that. And a big shout out uh, to Dan. He introduced me to this from Aaron Nemeth. On this link and on his videos he provided, he shows exactly how to add it onto your, your, your Cascada um, program. So I've done that already. Um, and this is what I'm gonna show you now. So now I'm gonna use that keyframe reduction to make my animation a little bit smoother, to take out all those keyframes in between. So it looks something like this. You highlight again your whole interval, and then you go to commands, and there you'll see keyframe reduction, uniform, and you can select how big you want it. So five, I think is good enough for me. You can make it bigger or smaller, and that's exactly what it looks like. You see every fifth keyframe. So just look at animation now. It already looks a lot smoother. And then we can clean it up from here. And it's just gonna make your life a lot easier. Again, unbaking can take a long time. It can bomb out and might not be exactly what you want. I find this process much easier, simpler, um, just a better process. I, I would recommend this add-on. So this is usually the first change I make with my um, with my mannequin. So I actually take auto posing off. And then I put auto posing back on the feet. And I also do it for the whole interval again. And to do that, you must make sure that the whole interval edit mode is selected and the whole interval is also selected. Highlight everything and you put auto posing back. We do that by highlighting what we want to have auto posing and pressing shift Z. Now look at my feet all planted all nicely. Um, it's already a massive, massive difference. And then from here, I just go and I uh, see what needs to be changed. So I produce six animations within an hour 
and having them all cleaned up, you're never going to find one program that does everything exactly the way you want. So the best is to find other programs out there that can assist you with the way you like to work or your workflow. And for me, that really says all the smoke apart is they've got a thing called a lifetime license. So that means you buy this now and you can use it forever. And not just the version you bought, they continue to update this and you can use the updates forever. You pay once, use forever. You have Cascada, I started using that around two years ago. Uh, they've got the free version now, they've got the Indian and Pro and the Teams version. Uh, it's also very decently priced. Uh, you can pay for it annual or monthly. And then what they also have is the perpetual license. So when your license expires, you are more than welcome to still use the software. You just won't get any updates. And then yes, animation that was created via Dollars Mono and Cascada. I hope you found this helpful and insightful. See you in the next one. Cheers. Thank <laughs> you.